Hi, my name is Maciej Krasowski. I am representative of a company called Binarabs. Binarabs.com is a software development agency from Poland hiring 150 developers. As an attendee of this program, we had a chance to pick one of a couple of projects to create on Cardano. So we went with the centralized exchange. Now my friend Paweł, one of the developers of this project, will explain to you what we did and what we achieved. Hello, my name is Paweł. I'm a developer from Binarabs team. I would like to introduce you through the process of building and launching our DEX application. I will show you as well some basic use cases. To build DEX, we need to get its source code. It's available in open and free way on GitHub repository binarabs slash DEX. Once we have a source code, we need to install the Nix toolkit to build Nix environment for development purposes. This is in fact the only requirement for our project. When the Nix installation is ready, get into a recently cloned project. This command installs all the dependencies required to build project. The process of fetching and building dependencies will take a longer while, but in the end we'll have a full development environment for the project. After that, we are ready to build it. In order to build a DEX application, we need to build backend and frontend modules. To build a backend part of the application, type cabal build all. To build frontend part, get into Uniswap UI directory and run npm run build command. In case we want to run tests, type cabal test uniswap. The uniswap PAB module is the core of the DEX application. It includes smart contract implementation on Bluetooth platform and exposes Bluetooth backend-like endpoints. The uniswap JSON API is a simple HTTPS proxy serving some statuses utilization, as well as additional helpers for front-end. The latter command serves the UI and automatically opens the URL in the browser. This is the instance ID of the wallet number four. Once we are connected to the wallet, we can view its founts. As you can see in the simulation, the wallet have already some tokens assigned, A, B, C and D, as well as some amount of ADA. We can of course enlist all the available pools. Since there are none in this simulation, we will create one. First we will choose the token names, let's say A to B and some amounts as well as setting up some fee. The liquidity pool has been created and we are ready to perform a swap. We will select a coin name and some amount. As you can see, there is a preview of how much it will get for the same for, for this amount. Let's perform a swap. The swap has been performed and the pool has also changed. Thank you, Pavel. The next thing we want to do with our DEX is to connect it to the external wallet then design the concurrency solution and at the end deployment on a testnet and then on a mainnet. 
And at the end, I would like to invite you to visit our website, byron.network. Also, please don't hesitate to check out our repository and our Twitter account. Hey, I'm Colin, and I'm here with Obsidian Systems. We're a full-stack Haskell product development shop and participants in the Plutus Partner Program. I'm going to tell you a little bit about us, our journey to Cardano, and then we're going to have a quick look at a DeFi app we've been building on the platform. So Obsidian started about seven years ago as a Haskell consultancy that specialized in startups. Our typical client was maybe an expert in some industry who had a great idea and some funding, but needed a partner to bring their vision to life. Obsidian was that partner. Uh, we'd dive into our client's industry and work with them to develop their product plan. Because we'd gone through this process so many times, we knew that our clients didn't just need sort of hands-on keyboards but a true partner uh, that really understood what they were trying to accomplish and a process that would reliably get them there. So we'd guide our clients, uh, many of them first-time founders, through the process of planning their MVP, building it, launching, getting feedback from their early users or investors, and iterating. So that's seven years of building. Okay, so perhaps it was an unusual choice at the time, but we built all our products in Haskell, even prototypes. It wasn't just that Haskell helped us build more secure, robust, correct software. It gave us the power to manage complexity. Uh, we think what slows down innovation isn't having to do things uh, right. It's having to worry about too many things at once. Um, Haskell's brand of pure functional programming lets us separate concerns, make reusable pieces that reliably plug together and make rapid progress on extremely complex applications um, without having to keep the whole thing in our heads at once. Uh, we think if your tool doesn't give you leverage on difficult problems, then you're going to end up avoiding difficult problems and solving easy, boring ones instead. These two characteristics of our approach, uh, learning our client's industry inside out and managing complexity, proved effective and popular outside of the startup market as well. So Obsidian grew quite quickly from two Harvard Law graduates in New York City to about 40 people spread across the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan. And this was just as blockchain was growing. Uh, so we had the opportunity to bring our approach and our tools to this space. Uh, in a short time, we have worked on protocols, smart contract IDEs, ledger applications, bridges, dApps uh, across several ecosystems. Then about a year ago, we got involved with Cardano, and everything sort of just came together. It's the perfect convergence of our Haskell, blockchain, and product development experience. We've worked directly with IOG as a development partner, working on tooling and infrastructure for the ecosystem. And we've been working with a growing number of people building on top of Cardano. Uh, some of you probably already met a couple of my Obsidian peers on the IOG technical community discord or the Plutus GitHub repo. Uh, they've, they've been a part of the team providing Plutus support to the community. Uh, we've been encouraged by a diverse set of um, extremely experienced and budding uh, Haskell engineers who have all been contributing in their own ways. Which brings us to the Plutus Partner Program. Obsidian Systems has also been involved in the Partner Program since it kicked off this summer. We've been developing examples and documentation to help support Plutus application developers wherever they might be. Let's look at just one example. Now, decentralized finance is a powerful and increasingly popular concept. And having worked on several chains, we think Cardano uh, has a great deal of promise here, especially as we move from the basic suite of uh, DeFi implementations to a much more complex financial operating system in the future. So to give some sense of how a developer might start working on a DeFi project in such a climate, we've put together an example repository called Pokedex, demonstrating some basic swap and liquidity pool functionality. But it should come as a surprise that we built this application from the ground up with Haskell using our open source Obelisk framework, which gives you a full stack Haskell app and some tools to speed up that development. 
of course, you can build your application uh, however you'd like. But for us, uh, in addition to Haskell's normal advantages, it's nice to be able to work on the front end, back end, and reason about the on-chain code in the same language. App architecture. We've got three components, the front end, the back end, and the Plutus application back end, or PAB. Here, we'll run the PAB on the left. It'll begin a simulation of a Uniswap-like smart contract. On the right, we run our Obelisk application, which will communicate with the PAB. The front end and back end operate very much like any other web app. The user interacts with the front end, sends requests to the back end, and the back end sends responses to the front end. We use FRP or functional reactive programming on the front end and push live updates from the back end to the front end to ensure that the user always sees up to date information. The difference between this and a regular web app, of course, is that the back end communicates with the PAB. The back end is in part acting as a relay between the front end and the PAB. Uh, while we used Haskell and Obelisk to build our sample application for reasons of efficiency, uh, you're free to use whatever technologies you like. There is no lock-in here. Moving on to the actual interface, here you can see a token swap occurring on a front end. When the amounts are entered on the left, the values are automatically sent to the back end, and the back end provides a live estimate of the transaction costs and number of tokens we should expect to receive. When we actually perform the swap, the back end sends the transaction to the PAB, which executes a smart contract governing this transaction and provides a result. Once we get that result, we can update the front end with the outcome. Uh, worth noting, the process is the same for staking and redeeming liquidity and has been implemented. In each case, we gather user input, construct a transaction to send to the PAB on the back end, and then execute the contract uh, via the PAB. Okay, so what's next? Well, first, this demo application is available on GitHub and may serve as a good example of how you can build the prototype of your dApp using the Plutus application backend. With the PAB, you can develop an end-to-end -end application locally today without having to run or connect to testnet. Uh, soon, it'll be possible to take that locally developed prototype and deploy essentially the same code to private or public testnets, even mainnet with minimal friction. We see this as a relatively seamless and simplified development process and think it should drastically lower the barriers to building and launching dApps that solve real-world problems. So we're planning on continuing to develop the feature set of this example and using this repo as an example of an application developed via PAB and deployed to testnet. Okay, well, we hope this quick tour of our work has been helpful, and we honestly look forward to coming together with many of you to build systems that solve real-world problems. We'll see you soon. Hello everyone, my name is Tobias Kirmes, I am the Communication Lead at the Ottonio Foundation and today I want to give you a quick introduction about ourselves and tell you more about our plans for the Cardano ecosystem. But let's start with a brief introduction about our project. Ottonio was founded in 2017, you can clearly say we've been around for some time now. We have been incubated by SingularityNet in 2019, um, with which we still have a very close um, relationship with Bengatsu being one of our advisors, for example, and we are um, deeply interconnected with their spin-off project, Singularity DAO. And as it stands now, we have more than 15 members in the team and we are still growing. Since the beginning, our main goal has always been to build a prosperous community around algorithmic trading. We started off with a trading terminal that allowed users to automatically trade based on the user's indicator settings, but we early on realized that the real importance for the crypto space, or more specifically the decentralized finance space, uh, is with liquidity. So we actually built the first market-making instance that was capable to run on decentralized exchanges. Back then it was BitShares. With that in mind, we continue to build tools with the goal to enable our users to generate revenue and manage their assets with ease. Our core focus currently lies on building solutions for cross-chain liquidity aggregation and on building intelligent investment tools. For us, DeFi, or decentralized finance, is an important and critical use case of blockchain technology. 
Um, DeFi activity on any chain is indicative uh, of its success and popularity. Its use cases are growing uh, rapidly and um, a huge amount of growth and activity on Ethereum, for example, or other chains is directly related to the increase in DeFi products. And it's more than interesting to be one of the early movers um, that help laying a foundation of a, a solid DeFi ecosystem on Cardano. So one of the first steps we will make accessible at launch will be the bridge. Um, we will create a way for users to seamlessly um, bridge the funds from Ethereum to Cardano, for example, and um, the other way around. Through the direct uh, Cardano wallet integration into our um, staking dashboard, um, we will enable Cardano users to stake their funds um, directly from Cardano. And this is how it will look like for the user. He will be able to choose between four different tokens, um, which will be our own token, NIOX, um, ADA, HEIX and the Singularity DAO token. And then he can check the rewards to see what he can expect and then simply hit stake after he choose, chose the amount and the token. After another confirmation, he has to wait a little bit and then he's basically done. So what's further down the road from our end? So the most, at least for me personally, the most one of the most exciting things we are currently building is uh, the cross-chain liquidity aggregation. The build-up for the liquidity aggregation um, is basically parted into two phases. The first phase is the bootstrapping phase, which means that we are bootstrapping liquidity on different chains um, to prepare that as a means for cross-chain activity. The second phase, the connecting phase, um, basically then starts with uh, the broader launch of the cross-chain solution on several chains like uh, Ethereum, Polygon and Cardano, and uh, most likely more to come. That will then enable users to um, um, trade across uh, several chains and use, for example, limit orders on uh, several um, chains. So how would that look from a user's perspective? The user will simply visit the aggregator site and um, chooses the assets he wants to trade or bridge and chooses the action he wants to take, like for example, sell or buy or bridge. And then the system gives him several different options um, and shows him, like for example, um, the route using chain A will be the fastest, using chain B will be the um, will be the cheapest and um, using chain C uh, will be the most convenient because you already have the funds on uh, chain C. Another exciting thing we will have in store are our smart pools. Those are basically intelligent investment pools um, which um, adapt, for example, the, pr uh, the pricing curve based on the market conditions. They are risk adjusted. Um, they will enable active liquidity management and they will execute inventory management strategies. All this will be powered by artificial intelligence. And um, the goal of the smart pools is to create a sustainable yield for the user. Feel free to visit our website at otonio.foundation or um, join our Telegram chat um, and never hesitate to directly reach out to anyone from the team. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michael Maverick. I am software engineer and research and development manager at Alex. In this demo, I would like to share with you our experience building the NFT marketplace uh, based on the Bluetooth smart contract language on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, just a few words about the Alex and why we have chosen to work in with the Cardano and experiment with the Bluetooth blockchains. Alex is a custom software development company focusing on the complex uh, solutions uh, for the businesses. Uh, we provide services from the web application, desktop to mobile and blockchain, one of the, our services and technology which we are working on. So the main reason why we have chosen uh, the Bluetooth and Cardano blockchain is because we would like to experiment and see its capabilities uh, for what solutions it could fit better and what problems it could solve as well as, as to see the difference to the other blockchains and how it could be easier uh, with Cardano to implement some particular things. Uh, the business scenario have been chosen as a NFT marketplace. 
basically it's provide functionality for minting, transferring, buying and selling NFT as well as a canceling uh, if some user decided to, to cancel uh, the selling. The POC performs like real decentralized application, so we have implemented everything uh, based on chain uh, with the help of the Pluto. Uh, so in this way, application works as a as a DAP, and it doesn't require any additional functionality from its classic uh, approaches for in in the backend of uh, database storages. The functionalities which is included in this uh, demo uh, is a sign-in and login page with uh, predefined wallets. Uh, functionalities that allow us to mint uh, and create the new NFT. Uh, after all, uh, after this, uh, user can sell it, and another user can see it from the storefront, and in this way, later on, can buy it or just after buying direct transfer. Um, to the another user. Uh, here you can see the high level architecture uh, of the, our solution. So basically we have uh, the UI through which uh, users can interact with the platform and with each other in the way that they will collaborate and create and sell and or transfer uh, the particular NFT. Uh, under the hood we have the Plutus application backend uh, through which uh, UI is integrated and in its order PIB is integrated with the wallet which is on chain code and like smart smart contracts which is on on chain code on chain code responsible for the transaction validation uh, NFT ownership tracking uh, the store and the metadata on NFT and the marketplace business logic itself the source code is publicly available uh, on the GitHub. Uh, you can see a link uh, on the screen or you can just go to the GitHub input output HK, Plutus use cases and find the Alex NFT case. Uh, I just switch tabs and show you that everything is here and uh, there is a readme so you can even uh, pull the code, uh, deploy it. Uh, follow the instructions and experiments with, with this demo on your own. You can customize it or update, add more features or do with it whatever, whatever you want uh, for your experiments. Uh, yep, and now we will switch into actually the web UI and play, play with our demo. So let me log out. So I will log in with the wallet one. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, the home page. Uh, basically, here we will see all publicly available tokens for selling. Uh, we have tab which is allow us to create NFT, and my collection page where like tokens related to particular users are displayed. So let let's create the, our new token. Uh, giving it a name. And give it some description. Okay, uh, our TOS token has been created. Uh, it's not visible on the home page yet because it's still uh, just in the My Collection. And uh, we, we are not put it on sale yet. So let's put it on sale. Uh, set in price uh, in the Loveless. Yep, and now if we will go to the home page, we will be we'll able to see the new created token. Let's create the another one that we see with some difference. Uh, give it some other name. It's still created by Michael and description.
Okay, so we created the second token. And now you can see that it's divided in the two sections. The first one actually represented the token that put it on sale and another one just owned uh, by, by this particular user or wallet. Yep, and let's switch to the another wallet and try to buy to buy the new token. Yep, as you can see, this user also can see the created NFT on the storefront, uh, but he doesn't have any any created token for himself. So maybe just now let's let, let's buy this one from another user and. Yeah, so in this way, uh, the token has been uh, bought by Wallet2. The ownership was rewritten in the smart contract and the money was sent to the Wallet1. And now we will see that uh, our storefront is empty and this token appears on the My Collection page under the Wallet2. Yeah, and if we will go to the back to the Wallet1, uh, we see that only one token is available here. Yep. And just to show you the, how transfer token works uh, without selling option, it's just we put, choosing, choosing the sum of the wallet, let, let's it be the wallet four. Uh, well, in the real scenario yeah, here we have predefined wallet, but in the real scenario it will be just field uh, where user put in the address of the wallet where this token should be transferred on. But in our case, we just choosing it from the select box. Okay, token is transferred. Yep, we see that there is no any tokens in the my collection because one uh, has been sold and another one has been transferred to the wallet for. And now we will go to the wallet for and we will be able to see yep, this transfer token from the wallet one uh, here. And this user now, for example, can sell it or put it on sale uh, because he owned it. And this token will appear in the, in the storefront. Basically, basically that's it. Uh, it's shown the core functionalities that allow to mint, uh, sell token, buy it or transfer. Uh, so don't don't hesitate to, to experiment and get in touch with the Plutus smart contract language and the Cardano blockchain. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention and good luck. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Daria. Uh, I'm a project manager at MetalM uh, and we're really glad to participate in the Cardano Summit this year. Uh, and our Haskell team um, is a size of 12 people. Uh, we chose two use cases. Um, our developers, Olga and Smyslav, will tell you about it in detail. Um, I can say that at the moment, uh, we feel pretty confident in Plutus and uh, really looking forward to the new commercial projects and uh, perspectives. Uh, we did our best to make uh, a considerable contribution uh, to the Cardano community by uh, researching the platform, uh, giving feedback, uh, developing our applications, uh, examining the testnet, um, and so on. Uh, and I'm sure that um, we will open the new page uh, when we complete uh, our apps deploy uh, to the Cardano testnet. So now uh, I turn it over to the guys uh, that will tell you more about the apps. And uh, please meet uh, Olga. Uh, she will describe uh, the landing pool app. Hello, everyone. My name is Olga. I am Haskell developer at MetaLamp. I will present landing pool service. Landing pool is an application which connects borrowers and lenders through a special pool. This pool helps borrowers to find cryptocurrencies uh, that they want to borrow, as well as lenders to receive interest rates by deposits. The lending pool architecture is based on the AAV protocol, which provides a pool-based strategy. 
Let's watch a demonstration of blending pool. Be prepared a simplified UI to interact with two user wallets and show how the state of blending pool will be changed. Let's watch a demonstration of blending pool. We prepared a simplified UI to interact with two wallets, wallet one and wallet two, and show how the state of blending pool will be changed. Firstly, let's look to the lender side. To lend, the user should deposit some amount of currency, let's say 500 of USD tokens, We see that 500 of USD tokens appears at the lending pool. And on deposit, eight tokens um, are minted. In our case, there are a USD tokens. And then to receive interest rate, users should provide a collateral. Okay, on provide collateral, a tokens um, are locked at the pool, at the pool script. Let's look to the borrower side. To borrow, the user should provide a collateral too. The price of collateral limits the maximum amount to borrow. Let's deposit 200 euro tokens to borrow 200 USD tokens. And now we should provide a collateral in euro tokens. Okay, we can see that um, euro pool balance is 200 tokens now, and we locked a euro tokens at the script address. Now we can call borrow endpoint and borrow 200 USD tokens. Okay, now we see that here uh, we had 500 tokens and now we have 300 tokens and here uh, we have 200 NFT tokens added. Uh, for now, we are working on the risk parameters, business logic and interest rate accumulation. And then we will deploy uh, lending pool service to the Cardano testnet. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Stanislav Zdanovich. I am a Haskell developer at Metalam. I will tell you about uh, NFT marketplace wise now. Uh, it enables users to uh, create NFT tokens for any file and put them on sale or auction. Other users of the marketplace are able to buy these tokens or participate in auctions for them. A marketplace script stores metadata associated with tokens. Firstly, uh, each NFT has a name and description. Then a nested list of categories can be added. We could also optionally reveal a public key of the issuer. A uh, bundle feature uh, also uh, is added to the marketplace. It allows combining NFT tokens into bundles and operating them as a single unit when selling or buying it. Uh, there are important model features that provide certain guarantees to the user. The uniqueness of uh, uploaded file is guaranteed by using APFS content addressable storage uh, to store uh, uploaded files. Uh, IPFS content ID is then used to link the NFT with the file in the storage. Content ID is then stored in token metadata inside owner's wallet. 
To be specific, it is used as a token name. NFT can be imported from another marketplace only if the standard of the marketplace is using the content ID as a token name. Privacy of the content ID is guaranteed by uh, storing only its hash after minting the token. The purpose uh, is to hide the NFT token until the owner decides to make it public. Content ID is then revealed when uh, NFT is put on sale or auction. Uh, so we are looking at marketplace client now. Uh, we have started um, NFT marketplace smart contract through owner API. And now we could interact with uh, user API. Uh, it can create NFTs, NFT bundles, uh, users can trade it, items specifically open and close sale, buy NFTs, start and complete auctions and build on auctions. The API for accessing marketplace state uh, is also provided. Uh, let's do a quick demo for creating an NFT from file and then putting it on sale and buying it. Uh, so I want to meet and um, mint an NFT token for a dog picture. I'm choosing um, a picture with which I have already downloaded. I want to reveal issue and add it to Tinder. After I'm submitting the NFT, um, the NFT should show up in user's wallet. And so all, all the fields I have entered are present here. And also I get put on sale and, and put on auction. Let's say I want to sell it for 6,000 lollies. Uh, after that, it should show up uh, on market page. Here it is, and we could close sale or buy NFT. Uh, let's choose another wallet and now buy NFT. Uh, so now it should show up inside the personal page. <clears throat> Here it is, and we also could uh, put it on sale or put an auction, but now it belongs to Wallet B. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we're really, really looking forward to continue our cooperation and uh, finally deploy our uh, applications to the Cardano testnet. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Ronald Spon, co-owner of Dequadvant, an independent software development and IT services company from the Netherlands. Dequadvant was founded early 2021 together with my business partner Sunday Pandey. Our goal is to develop solutions on the Cardano blockchain. We have quite some experience with blockchain and large-scale IT projects. Next to that we are running a stake pool on mainnet under the ticket journal. We joined the Plutus Partner Program in May 2021 and our goal is to bootstrap our Cardano business. Dequadrant currently has two Plutus developers, but we are rapidly expanding our Plutus team. Today we are presenting the results of our work done as a Plutus Partner to you. Our team has chosen some interesting use cases to build on Cardano. One of them is NFT Marketplace and the other one is Stablecoin. For the ones that are not familiar with NFTs yet, here's a quick summary. Our development team has built an NFT Marketplace app that is fully functional and supports minting, buying and selling of NFTs. The marketplace supports the following modes of sales, direct sale and English auction. The following diagram shows the direct sale transaction flow supported by the reference implementation. The 
following diagram shows the transaction flow of the English auction where multiple bidders can bid on an NFT for sale and outbid each other. The reference implementation has support for third party fees which can be used for royalties, curation and charities. Now it's time to give a small demo about the NFT marketplace and the results our team achieved so far. This brings us to the end of the demo, we hope you all enjoyed it. 
The next use case our team worked on is stablecoin. For the ones who don't know what a stablecoin is, here's a short summary. Our development team used the HUSD protocol to implement a stablecoin in Plutus. The DAP supports minting and redeeming of the reserve coin and minting and redeeming of stablecoin and using ADA as collateral. What we have achieved so far is available as open source in the below repositories. It contains the source code, documentation, architecture, explanation and tests. What is coming next? We are working towards launching both reference implementations on testnet. We will present the results of this work to the Cardano community. We will create another video about the current status of the stablecoin project, since unfortunately there is not enough time in this presentation. What we like to share with you about Cardano is that it is backed by a very safe programming language. It has a vibrant and supportive community, as well as a supportive and helpful engineering company that provides us with the tools and chances for disruption and innovation, for which we like to thank IOG. About the Quadrant, we have an experienced team of software developers with very good knowledge of blockchain technology and experience with Cardano, especially as a Plutus partner in creating Plutus smart contracts. In case you have a business idea to develop a dApp on Cardano and need help, please reach out to us. We like to thank you all for your attention and wish you a great Cardano Summit. Hi there, I'm Ben Hart, Director of Cardano Operations over here at MLabs. I'm very excited to show you some of the projects that we're working on right now. We're going to start off with uh, a little clip that I did earlier with Maximilian, who is going to show us what we've been working on for the Plutus Partners program. Hi, Max. Hello, Ben. Tell me a little bit about what we'll see today. We're taking a look at our demo of governance plus liquidity pools. Very high performance. Great. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's happening on the terminal. It looks like an, a number of users at different addresses are uh, accessing and, and trying to place a deposit with the smart contract. Is that right? Yeah, that's very specific, but correct, Ben. Yes, all of them are happening at once in a single block. Every single one. Yep, there we Proceed go. It. Uh, so, uh, and and those were able to go through all at once. Uh, and and my That's understanding right. is we're able to do this because we spread our state instead of having a central uh, source of our state, we have it spread across many different UTXOs. Is that correct? That's exactly right, Ben. Uh, sometimes the simplest solution is the best, and this pattern may be applied to many many programs on the Cardano ecosystem. Great. Not only governances, no. No, it's a, it's right across certainly DeFi and liquidity pools, but it, we use this over and over across uh, yeah. shared F state funny, for different users. Yeah, funny it is that the solution, at least in many cases, to the concurrency problem is to just decentralize it more, and decentralize right. and decentralize. Decentralize your data types in many ways. This is sort of a decentralized yes. map. All right. The best thing about the work that we're doing uh, for our Plutus Partners program with the, the governance and liquidity pool patterns that we're exploring is that uh, the work that you've seen in the video is actually available on the public testnet to, to take a look at and verify yourselves. So here we're taking a look at the cards bridge. This is a, an application that's going to allow for uh, tokens on Ethereum to easily transition over to new bridge tokens on the Cardano network. So uh, we're going to see here in a couple of different terminals, we'll have the Ethereum uh, chain up as a node in, in one terminal. We'll have uh, a centralized service and our app running in uh, another terminal. And also we'll have the Cardano node up as we submit transactions to that directly. So we'll, we'll, we have a Cardano network. And we're actually going to be able to go from live network to live network on test nets, passing a token from one to the next. Um, moving through that system uh, across the bridge.
We've gone ahead and submitted a transaction on the Ethereum side, so we're just going to see things flow through each step. And we're going to see that the, the tokens are able to move from Ethereum to uh, Cardano seamlessly. So we now have our uh, Loveless and our new token in a Cardano wallet. MLabs is also developing the smart contracts involved in Jiro Wallet. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Jiro Wallet. Next, we're going to hand things off to Aunt Jay, who's going to tell us a little bit about the Ardana stablecoin protocol. Hello, everyone. Today, for this short demo, we are going to show you part of the progress we made with the Ardana stablecoin. The demo will focus on vault, the creation, depositing of collateral, and minting of the stablecoin. So here we are, starting our small demo app. First, let's initialize the vault. In the demo, an owner of Wallet1 wants to create his own vault. To do so, he starts the vault contract and waits for it to be acknowledged by the chain. Please don't mind all those lines of strange information. This is all just the debug informing us how the exact transaction will look like. And now we see two balances instead of one. First of all, Wallet1 has a bit less ADA available as it had to pay fees for the transaction to happen. But we also see that some script with a really long name has joined our demo. It is the vault contract itself. For now, it does not hold any funds apart from this identity token. Now, let's deposit some ADA in the vault as collateral. To mint 100 USD, the owner of both Wallet1 and the vault will deposit 80 ADA, which is 80 million loveless. And now he has. In Wallet 1, there is 80 million loveless less, but currently the vault contract holds those funds. Finally, we are ready to mint some DOSD, the Ardana stablecoin. Once again, the owner of Wallet 1 is calling the contract, asking it to mint that stablecoin. In the process, in Wallet 1, we shall see 100 DOSD, which we do. To finish our demo, we will repay DOSD to the vault and withdraw our collateral. Of course, in the real world, the user will have to repay a bit more DSD, but for the sake of the demo, let's assume that we are repaying precisely the same amount we have borrowed. And now we see that the vault has burned the USD. And let's withdraw the collateral. We have to wait a moment for it to happen. And as you can see, the vault is no longer holding the funds. And in Wallet1, once again, we have those ADA we deposited. The fourth digit has changed from 1 back to 9. Thank you for watching. This was a short overview of our work, but of course, there is much more to come. On behalf of the entire Ardana team, we hope you enjoyed this demo. Finally, I'd like to mention our involvement with Liquid Labs, a non-custodial lending platform, uh, as well as LQUSD, uh, a stablecoin protocol, 
and Sunday Swap, a decentralized exchange. That's all for MemLabs. I'd like to thank all of the teams who contributed to today's demo. Have a great day. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Vuk and I'm excited to be able to share some of the work that Atlas did on Plutus in the past, but also some of the work that Atlas is working on right now, focusing on Plutus. So, Embellable DAX, this was uh, the first project that uh, was centered around the developers. So, the main objective of Embellable DAX is to provide a web component to the developer that he can then use either in React View or Angular or directly use in an HTML page. Uh, the reason why this is important is because usually as a dev developer, you're gonna have your uh, token and uh, you wanna provide some liquidity to that token. So you wanna provide a way for users to trade ADA for that particular token and uh, add liquidity to that particular liquidity pool in the case uh, they wanna participate. Uh, this is very important because uh, of the economy that you're trying to build as a, a dev developer uh, because you're focused more around building that ecosystem around your dev rather than uh, just building the dev that has uh, uh, some features on the front end. This is the web UI that you can use uh, as default, but you can also change the web component with uh, custom fields, uh, basically changing colors and so on. As you can see, you, you have like uh, the web component for adding liquidity uh, and the web component for swapping particular tokens. Uh, the way that this looks in code, for example, in an HTML page, you can see that it's enough that you use the alt swap uh, web component directly uh, in your body. And uh, basically it's just gonna appear on the web page, as simple as that. The next problem that Atlas focused on was uh, horizontal scaling of the PAP. Uh, uh, we believe that like scaling in general, it's gonna be very important uh, for Cardano, but this is uh, also very important for any other blockchain uh, because uh, in general, like uh, blockchains by default are not very good at scaling. Uh, but the way we uh, actually focus on tackling this problem uh, for the PAB is by wrapping the PAB in a LXC container and running that on a normal cluster and doing some uh, basically load balancing through that cluster uh, in that way uh, theoretically allowing uh, millions of users to interact with the Cardano network. Uh, this is how it looks. So basically users would be uh, calling one of the PABs and there is like some synchronization going on, but uh, basically uh, you could keep adding the PABs and uh, with that scale horizontally. Something that we are very excited about and that uh, we are working right now is uh, incentivizing storage of particular files, uh, uh, exactly of particular data sets. You can imagine uh, that being uh, uh, for example, cancer research data or uh, global warming data. And uh, those data sets are very important to be stored. And the way that, uh, that it currently works is that you have maybe some of the cloud providers that are storing those files, but uh, then you are very limited in terms of what you can do, uh, like uh, how much bandwidth you're uh, allowed to use or like which particular pieces of that data set uh, you can use. And also those are very limited. Uh, now, what we wanna basically uh, unlock is a way for users uh, on Cardano to be able to stake their tokens to particular uh, data sets and have then storage providers, for example, on Filecoin, uh, be able to like uh, benefit from that liquidity if they store those particular data sets. This is something that has not been built before. Uh, it doesn't exist on Ethereum, and we think that uh, Cardano is a good fit for this, and we are so thrilled that we are gonna be able to launch it in a couple of months. Also, uh, we would like to work more on interoperability with other networks, because we believe that like having the liquidity flow from Cardano to other networks uh, is gonna be essential for the health of the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, but it can also benefit uh, the Cardano ecosystem in terms of gaining more adoption from users from other ecosystems. Uh, 
this is from us and thank you so much for your time and hope that uh, you'll enjoy the products that we have built and uh, you're gonna support us in the future by using those. Thank you, bye. Introducing Card Starter, the first insured launch pad and accelerator for Cardano projects. Our goal at Card Starter is to connect the Cardano community with early access to the thoroughly vetted projects that launch through our platform. In line with Cardano's ethos, we believe in inclusion, transparency, and building the foundation for decentralized applications that will drive how the economy of the future operates. We dedicate ourselves to providing a high level of due diligence and quality control for the projects that we support entering the DeFi space. This helps protect our community from exposure to much of the risk currently associated with involvement in new DeFi projects. We ensure that projects have a qualified team, are in an advanced stage of development, have great token utility and economic structure. We also provide incubation services for projects with amazing concepts who may need advisory and development support to be ready to go to market. You can easily stay up to date on Card Starter and our IDOs by following our Twitter channel or Telegram announcements channel at Card Starter Announcements or join in the community conversation in Telegram at Card Starter. Participating in Card Starter IDOs is relatively simple. Our community members who hold enough of our utility token, cards, can use them to qualify and register for our IDOs. When a new project is launching through our platform, our community simply needs to visit app.cardstarter.io to stake enough cards tokens to qualify for a tier. Once qualified for a tier, community members can visit pools.cardstarter.io to register for any active IDOs currently in the registration stage. Registration for an IDO will typically be open for three to four days, allowing people ample time to declare their intent to participate. Following the registration window, there's a two-day period where the Card Starter team confirms that the registered participants have provided their KYC info and are eligible to participate. The last stage is a 24-hour IDO event where community members who've registered visit the same pools page to purchase their guaranteed allocation of tokens for the project. Participants will receive the tokens immediately upon purchase, but will only be able to trade, swap, or send these tokens once the project deploys liquidity on a decentralized exchange. Card Starter welcomes you to join our community and learn about the exciting new projects that are the fundamental building blocks of DeFi on Cardano. Hello, and welcome to Charlie 3, a decentralized Oracle solution built for Cardano. We're so pleased to have the opportunity to present our product to you, the community, and share our vision of how we can help make the Cardano ecosystem a better place for all. We chose Cardano for the vision of innovation and philanthropy, but most importantly, community and potential for mass adoption. Our team at Charlie 3 sees the adoption of smart contract technology as a powerful enabler for any community able to harness it, regardless of your world status. We at Charlie 3 believe the efficiency and scalability of Cardano infrastructure will enable projects of all size and funding to harness the power of emerging smart contract technology. However, the Cardano infrastructure on its own will not be able to support a fully functioning ecosystem. Projects require data feeds to function. These feeds are typically costly or unreliable. This is where Charlie 3 has a part to play. Our mission is to provide accessible, reliable, secure, and trusted data feeds to any project in need. Our hope is that data feeds will never be a blocker for launch. Moreover, 
By building on Cardano and leveraging the benefits of its infrastructure, we are able to transfer value to our ecosystem of data consumers, node operators, and data providers. So let's take a look at the tech that will help us accomplish this mission. Hello everyone. The Charlie 3 Oracle and Node Operation model is specifically built for Cardano to take advantage of its innovative approach. Let's take a look at how it functions. This video will provide a technical overview of how Charlie 3's decentralized oracles work using a single price feed for the current price of ADA, measured in US dollars as an example. The foundation of our oracles are the Charlie 3 nodes, which consist of the Charlie 3 node engine being operated and maintained by independent node operators. These nodes aren't controlled by Charlie 3 directly and can be operated by anyone with the right expertise. Having multiple independent nodes in this manner adds a layer of security, as the decentralized nature of it means that it takes much more than a single bad actor to manipulate the value of the price feed. The person setting up the feed is able to control which node operators are able to provide data for the feed, allowing them to get a level of security they need for their feed. Each individual node monitors the target data, in this case, the price of ADA, Whenever the price changes a significant amount or a set amount of time has passed, each node sends the current price of ADA onto the blockchain. Once a sufficient number of Charlie 3 nodes have updated their data values on chain, an aggregation will be triggered. Not all of the nodes need to have provided updated values to allow for an aggregation, only enough of the majority to get a good sample size. This keeps the Oracle robust against downtime of individual Charlie 3 nodes and incentivizes nodes to provide updates as quickly as possible. The aggregation takes all the updated values and compares them to one another. This way, values that are wildly different from the overall consensus of the nodes can be discarded to secure against bad actors trying to manipulate the feed. Charlie 3 nodes that provided updated values for this aggregation are compensated for their work by receiving a certain amount of Charlie 3 token, C3. This entire aggregation happens on chain, meaning that the input and the output can be inspected at every step of the way, making the process transparent and auditable. Once the aggregation is over, a new data value is produced, in this case the ADA price that all the Charlie 3 nodes can agree upon. This value is stored in multiple independent UTXOs that are ready for consumption by the feed users. For example, a decentralized exchange that needs the current price of ADA in US dollars. Storing the Oracle output in multiple UTXOs in this manner helps us to avoid throughput issues, as each UTXO is available to serve as a separate transaction within the same block. This process repeats itself over and over again for each individual Charlie 3 Oracle feed on the blockchain, with Charlie 3's decentralized nodes serving each of them. Finally, here's an example of the code working in real time. In short, our goal is to support the growth and innovation of the Cardano ecosystem by providing accessible and trusted data feeds for all projects in need. We envision a future where the impact of Charlie 3's data feeds and other initiatives directly improves the well being of communities around the world. Thank you so much for watching. We are excited for the continued growth of our project and hope you follow along with our journey. Hi, some of you know me, but for those who don't, my name is Pi Lanningham, and I'm the CIO at SundaySwap. The creators of Cardano envisioned a global society that is secure, fair, and transparent, and serves the many as well as the few. At SundaySwap, we want to provide some of the tools to make that possible. We see a world where peer-to-peer -peer open finance is the default and shares the stage with traditional finance we see finance flipped. 
We will realize this vision by building a foundation for DeFi products on Cardano. This foundation begins with a decentralized exchange where the peer-to-peer -peer exchange of value can be conducted safely, quickly, and cheaply. It begins with the Sunday Swap DEX. At the heart of the Sunday Swap DEX is a constant product pool, an automated market maker that quickly and safely provides the second party to all of your trades. Building on the success of similar projects, our exchange will feature several advanced capabilities right off the bat, including arbitrage resistance, arbitrary deposits, and shared capital efficiency. I'll talk about these more after our demo. Speaking of, I have a demo for you today. It's going to be fairly simple because of our limited time, uh, but let's talk about what we're going to see in that demo. Uh, I'm going to take our decks running on a private testnet. I'm going to create a new liquidity pool. I'm going to deposit some additional liquidity into that pool, and then I'm going to swap one token for another. All right, so let's hop right in. Um, what we have here is our DEX running on a private Alonzo testnet. Um, we already demoed some features of this on Crypto Capital Ventures' YouTube channel. We made a whole event of it, and uh, it was quite fun, so go check that out. Uh, because of the limited time, we didn't have a chance to show everything off, so I thought I'd round that out by showing you some of the other kind of core features today. Um, so I have a bunch of strawberry tokens, and I'm not really doing anything with them right now. So I want to become a liquidity provider and earn kind of a passive income off of people who are swapping raspberry tokens for strawberry tokens or vice versa. Um, and so the fees that are collected to that get distributed to liquidity providers. And so, you know, I want to, I want a piece of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go and add liquidity. Um, but one thing that's often confusing to new users is that, um, you know, I only have strawberry tokens. How do, how do I go and, uh, become a liquidity provider. Um, more after the demo on what we do to uh, what we plan to do to address that. Uh, but what I need to go do first is uh, swap some of those raspberry to or those strawberry tokens for raspberry tokens. Um, now I don't want to want swap the whole thing because then I won't have any strawberry tokens. Um, so I'm going to swap about half, um, uh, exactly half in this case. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and execute this swap. Um, and this is going to build and submit that transaction to the blockchain. Excellent. So that went through. Um, and so now I have uh, a roughly equal value of raspberry and strawberry tokens. So now I can go back and I can add liquidity for those uh, tokens. Um, so I'm going to specify just, you know, I just want to deposit it all as liquidity. Um, so I'm going to hold the deposit, and this is again I'm going to build and submit the transaction to the blockchain. Excellent. And so now I, you know, I'm a liquidity provider for uh, this DEX. Um, now suppose some time has passed and some, uh, you know, swaps have happened, and I want to go and you know collect those fees or or get access back to my um, initial capital. Um, and so I'd go and I'd withdraw that liquidity. Um, and you determine how much you want to withdraw um, based on the portion that you own. Um, in this case, I own the whole pool, but I'm just going to go ahead and withdraw half of it, right? You know, I'm, I need some money to pay bills or um, I kind of want to take advantage of a different um, opportunity in the market. Um, or maybe these tokens ha allow me to buy ice cream. And so I want some ice cream today. So I'm going to go ahead and go and remove liquidity. I'm going to hold this, and it's going to build and submit that transaction just like before. Excellent. And, and so that's it. That is um, the core features, uh, swapping, depositing, and withdrawing of our DEX. Um, now I'm going to go to a slide and I'm going to explain three of the features that we're building right now that are going to um, kind of enhance our DEX and make it stand uh, above the others. Um, we have many of these features planned um, and today I'm going to talk about three of them. All right, now I want to talk about some of the things that we're building right now that we expect to be live when the DEX launches. 
The first is fairly simple. That's this notion of arbitrary deposits. Um, so one of the most confusing things to new DeFi users is how to become a liquidity provider. You have to understand that you need equal value in two assets. And um, often all I have is one asset. I just have a bunch of ADA. Um, and so what would a sophisticated user do? Well, a sophisticated user would know uh, which asset they wanted and they would swap half of their ADA into that asset. Um, and so what we're providing is something that automates that. So uh, I can go to any pool and I can deposit just ADA um, or any ratio that I want. And at the time that it does the deposit, the pool will figure out what swap it needs to execute and, uh, and return the correct amount of liquidity provider tokens to you. The second thing I want to describe briefly is this notion of arbitrage resistance through the concept of virtual balances. It's a little bit technical, so bear with me. In a normal automated market maker, the, the market is observed through a series of price points. Uh, somebody makes a large buy and it pushes the price up. Um, and then what often happens is an arbitrager sees that and brings it back down with a sell. Um, and that spread between what the real market value is and what the price that the arbitrager got to observe was um, is value that's leaked to the arbitrager. In our automated market maker, we're going to keep track of separate bid and ask prices. So a large buy order will raise the buy price, but it won't raise the sell price very much. Um, and over time they'll converge. But if an arbitrager tries to bring that price back down to the market price, um, uh, they don't leak as much value. And so the majority of that value instead goes to the liquidity providers. Um, if there is no market activity or kind of left to its own devices, the market will ultimately end up converging back on a price. Um, but uh, this allows us to capture more value and more returns for our liquidity providers. The last concrete feature I want to talk about today is a way in which we have increased capital efficiency uh, for high volume markets. So in a normal market, there are many orders, and some of those are buy orders, and some of those are sell orders. Um, and an automated market maker has to suffer slippage and uh, leak value for each of those trades. Um, what we are doing is we are aggregating uh, those orders within a small time window. And there's some portion of those that could be executed perfectly efficiently with zero uh, slippage directly against each other. And so what we're doing is just that. And then for whatever overhang there is, we're dipping into the pool reserves to, um, to satisfy that market demand. And so really the, the total net slippage uh, that is experienced um, is much smaller and it's really only what the true market delta between all of the buyers and all of the sellers is. Those three features are great, but you best believe Sunday Swap won't be sitting on our hands. I wanted to give you a preview of the themes of some of the other features we're thinking about. Uh, so one of the big things we're going to be focusing on is composability. How does our protocol interoperate with other protocols? Uh, we're also looking closely at market entry. How do new projects launch and how can we innovate in the ways that they launch their token and on a DEX? And finally, we're going to be building some yield farming features to further increase the returns for a liquidity provider and provide kind of that compounding uh, passive income that uh, is so attractive in DeFi. And we're always looking for additional ways to innovate as well. So thank you for joining me in this presentation today, and uh, I hope to see you on the decks when we launch. Hi, uh, I'm Maxwell Thorson, the CTO of Echofolio, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about why we started Echofolio and the thinking behind it. 
my business partner and I, Ian, we, uh, although we come from significantly different backgrounds, uh, we both have an interest in and a love for trees and forests. And we realize that forests, uh, healthy forests, sustainable forests, are uh, a big part of the answer to the world's climate problems. Uh, the issue that, we, that came to our uh, attention was though that despite a lot of natural advantages uh, in forestry investment, those investments remained largely inaccessible to uh, most people. Uh, the major forestry investors tend to be uh, pension funds, family foundations, in other words, large pools of capital. Uh, we realized pretty quickly that there are there's a bit of a mismatch in the market or a market failure to address investors with capital who might otherwise invest in forestry uh, in, in large amounts if the opportunities were there uh, and they could do so. So we set out to address this by doing some research and finding out what vehicles and how we might be able to make that happen. Uh, the primary problem and the reason for this mismatch uh, we discovered is illiquidity, uh, despite the potential returns. Another factor is transaction costs, which uh, disproportionately affect smaller investors, uh, smaller investments. Uh, we, in looking into forest, we found that the key return drivers, uh, biological growth, timber price, and uh, land value changes, those are largely, uh, those are the, th the three areas, they're affected quite greatly by geographic location, especially uh, biological growth uh, happens more near the tropics, and land value changes, of course, uh, that depends on um, how close you are to a metropolitan area and uh, the, the value of land and the location. Uh, so despite these, uh, these, uh, these factors uh, offering the potential of good gains, we, we saw this mismatch and we came up with a concept of how to address this. First, by taking nat uh, nature-based assets such as forest and turning those into tokens, uh, using the blockchain uh, to where the settlement costs uh, are, are less and thereby lowering transaction costs, and then allowing people to trade these uh, uh, trade these tokens uh, uh, before the trees, before the, uh, the the forestry investment reaches maturity. That's all obviously in with forests. Another large factor is that if you have to hold your investment until the tree matures, then uh, that becomes perhaps a little bit impractical for most people to wait thirty or forty years. So. Uh, the ability to trade tokens that represent uh, forestry assets is also uh, is also very important. So those are some of the reasons why blockchain and forests go together. We basically need to plant more forests. Uh, NGOs have been doing a fantastic job out there for years, but they haven't reached the scale that's needed. And our feeling is that uh, since most of us need to invest our capital, at some point we'd like to provide for our futures and retire, uh, we need in, we need some type of return on that investment if we're going to deploy our capital somewhere. And so by doing this uh, and making that investment available to smaller investors, as well as the larger pools of capital, we hope to scale forestry investment much faster than it has been. Some of the other advantages to uh, blockchain uh, and, and our goals and part of our mission is to promote financial inclusion. Uh, it's great that large capitals of pool have been investing in forest, but this needs to, we need to include more people in this. Also, we need to create liquidity uh, in traditionally illiquid markets such as forestry. And uh, finally, as I said, uh, create impact at scale uh, to accelerate the, uh, the planting of trees and in fact other, other forms of natural capital. So the blockchain provides an infrastructure that uh, allows us to deliver uh, the value of forestry uh, in this way, uh, opening up for a larger pool of people. At Ecofolio, uh, our website, uh, we've uh, been in the Ethereum world for a while. Uh, our website is uh, ecofolio.com, so it's uh, E-K-O-F-O-L-I-O.com, and this is one of the pages showing uh, a uh, forest in Estonia, in fact, that we had tokenized. We did this on the Ethereum network, which is where we got our start, uh, and are now looking to move uh, full steam ahead into Cardano. And that brings up the question, why Cardano? We were, uh, as we've found out more about Cardano and interacted uh, with the teams there, we've been uh, just thrilled at the philosophical alignment that we have. Uh, we started out on Ethereum because that was the, uh, it provided the tools that we needed. 
but um, Cardano's uh, outlook, the trajectory, plus the academic rigor that it believe, that it uh, brings to uh, to the um, to the blockchain, is something that we're we're very interested in and uh, very supportive of. Cardano's trajectory, I mean, it, it's looking as if it's going to provide the tools, interoperability, and the longevity that we require to uh, to fulfill our mission. And uh, I've got uh, on this slide six specific things that uh, Cardano is doing that are important to our mission. Uh, proof of stake, uh, a focus on sustainability, uh, separation of contract and settlement layers, interoperability, uh, low transaction costs, and the ability to uh, provide transaction metadata. Uh, which is important in, in uh, the, the smart contract and the transactions that we're, uh, that we're uh, looking to develop. Um, all of these are interrelated with each other, of course, as well. Uh, but these are the things that uh, the reason that we believe in Cardano's future and our future on Cardano and are headed as uh, quickly and efficiently as we can toward building there. Uh, what is the road ahead? Uh, the road ahead for us, uh, the immediate future is uh, bringing on Plutus contracts so that we can uh, create an offering uh, in the uh, Cardano environment. One of the next things that we want to do is enable our users to pay in ADA uh, transaction fees or, or other costs. Uh, we would like that to be an opportunity for them. Uh, then the next is, as I mentioned earlier, tradability is absolutely key to what we're doing. So providing a DeFi gateway and launching on uh, the appropriate DeFi platforms. Uh, having done that, that will open the ability for us to create more offerings, uh, additional tokens representing additional forest assets that we can offer to investors. So that's the overview of what Ecofolio is. Uh, I will uh, admit it, it's rather a light overview uh, because of the time here, but I would encourage you to have a look at our website, uh, ecofolio.com. And uh, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or any of the staff. Uh, again, my name is Axel Thorson, and the website is ecofolio.com, uh, E-K-O-F-O-L-I-O.com. Thank you. Appreciate your listening.